I've had a number of viewers ask about how drag and drop can work with fluid boxes. And I thought I'd make a video today to share with you what I think you can do to make it work very effectively. So let's get started here. So I have a responsive project set up here, just a single slide. The very first thing you're gonna to need to do is create the initial number of fluid boxes. I'm thinking five vertical is probably a good way to start. However, of course, that's just my opinion. There might be other choices that are more appropriate for your project that you're designing. I'm going to go with five for starters. And the first thing I'm probably going to do is I'm going to resize some of these. So the very first one here is going to be reserved for my title. It doesn't need to be that large. The next fluid box is reserved for my instructions. And the bottom fluid box will be for navigation controls. And the one above that is where captioning will go. This middle section will be reserved for my drag sources and my drop targets. Now my thinking is that with the two different types of objects appearing in this single section here or the center section here, probably gonna want some child level fluid boxes within this fluid box. So I'm going to choose fluid box horizontal and in this case I'm going to choose two. You might choose three if you wanted some center space to uh, separate the two fluid boxes from one another but I think I'll stick with two for right now. Now there's some initial flow and wrapping choices that you probably need to make. The very first thing that I like to do now that I've been using fluid boxes for a while is I like to build in some padding first of all. So I'm going to put 10 pixels around everything on this particular slide. I'm going to choose the parent of those two center fluid boxes and do the same thing to that as well. And that should give me an, a lot of white space that I can work with. That way objects won't be butt up against one another. Now I've already gone ahead and created some of the objects for this slide. So I'm just going to drag my title into the title fluid box area my instructions into the next fluid box and I already have my drag sources. I'm going to put those into this first fluid box here and um, I've got a back button. I'm going to put that down on the bottom fluid box there. On this side here I've got uh, my drop targets and I'm going to throw those into the second of the two middle fluid boxes and also a next button for that bottom navigation control. Now right off the bat you can see some pretty crazy layouts here. Not really going to work for, for most situations. So let's select one of the fluid boxes and see what we can do to fix a few things up. So the first fluid box and the second fluid box, they seem fine. I'm not too worried about those. Um, the first of my center fluid boxes, we have a wrap to next column option. I think in this case here we're going to want squeeze into a column. Yeah, my instinct's right on that. And we're going to do the same thing for the second one as well. Squeeze those into a column as well. I do want some spacing in between them, so I think what we'll do is we'll add some vertical spacing, or some padding if you will, and we'll do the same thing for here as well. We'll do the same idea there. So that is stretched to fit and squeezed and so on, and it will give us the results we need. Let's take a look what happens when we shrink this down. Well, that's not really the style I'm looking for for the parent of the center fluid boxes. I can't imagine that seeming very logical. So I think we're going to have to squeeze into a row as well here. And I think the one thing that we want to do is actually to uncheck maintain aspect ratio on all of these objects. So again, they fill as much space as possible. And this will be really applicable when viewing this project on smaller devices like small tablets and smartphones. Noticing here of course my back and next buttons are now on top of one another so I'm going to select that last fluid box there and do the same thing as well. We're going to turn off wrap to next row and change it to squeeze and um, I think that should probably do us there. Let's put a little bit of horizontal padding uh, on that and I think that works so let's go back to full desktop view here 
So I think we're pretty much ready to go to start building this into an actual drag and drop functionality here. So let's use our interaction drop down icon and select drag and drop. And this will bring the drag and drop wizard to the forefront. You'll notice right off the bat a submit button is created. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that right now. For right now, I'm just going to build the relationship between my drag sources and my drop targets. So the first thing I need to do is specify the drag sources by clicking the objects on the slide and then clicking next. So we'll select Montreal, Vancouver, and Toronto. We'll click next. Now we need to specify the drop targets. We'll do that now. Ontario, Quebec, British Columbia, hit next. And now we need to specify the correct answers by drawing the lines between the drag sources and the drop targets. So Montreal goes with Quebec. Vancouver goes with British Columbia. And Toronto goes with Ontario. And you'll notice that a success caption and a failure caption have appeared as well. And we're going to deal with those as well. But for right now, let's hit finish and return to the regular Adobe Captivate interface. And let's take that submit button first of all, drag that down to our bottom fluid box where our navigation is going to go. And it's thrown it at the end here. I actually prefer it if it was in the center. So we'll move that over. So I have my next and my back button. What you can do uh, if you would like to control users from, uh, from seeing this, you can actually uh, or being able to navigate away from this page, you could hide the next button as I've done here. It's a not visible in output and you can make that part of the correct process. So the next thing we can do is we can drag our success and our failure captions down to this fluid box down here. The only problem with this particular fluid box situation is that the each caption is going to appear in a different spot and actually I don't want to necessarily distinguish between the two so what you can do is you can select that fluid box and change it from a standard fluid box into a static fluid box and the advantage of doing that is that captions will now be able to overlap on one another and you can customize the size and uh, align them through different methods uh, so, for example, I can select this one here, and this will be my failure message, and I will just simply say incorrect. And over here for my success message, I will say correct. We'll keep these simple. I am going to change the appearance of this particular. Oh, that's a little too intense for a green, I think. There we go. So I can select this one here and select this guy here. We can center them and make sure that they're aligned in the same size. Let's take a look at how we can customize this drag and drop a little bit. Let's start with the format. I'm going to choose my Montreal, Vancouver, and Toronto drag sources. And I'm going to choose the zoom in effect. This will give you the effect as if you're lifting it off the page and placing it onto the drop targets. Also, too, what we can do with the... Um, with the, uh, the drag and drop interaction itself is that we can check off redrag the drop source. This allows our users to change their mind. So if they were to accidentally drop Montreal on top of Ontario, realize the mistake, they would be able to drag it back to Quebec without having to submit to find out that they were wrong. The other thing we can do is we can select our drop targets and go over to the, uh, to the format tab click on the object actions and we can uncheck accept all keep the count at one and choose the default action to be replace and what this will do for us is it will prevent users from dragging more than one object onto one of the drop targets and that gives it a more natural and easier to use functionality it's really important that when you're creating your objects that you label them properly. As you can see here, British Columbia is called British Columbia on the properties panel and Quebec is called Quebec and so on. Even my next button is called next. And the reason I do this, it's a really good best practice, 
is that when you are working with something like a drag and drop or various different advanced actions, you can always know that your correct answers are set up properly because rather than being labeled something uh, cryptic like smart shape one, smart shape two, smart shape three, the actual name of the object makes sense and you'll be able to line them up and make sure that your combination is set up correctly. A couple things I like to do to change my captions a little bit. I do like to set them up for timing. I find that three seconds is not enough. So we can select your caption and input another number of seconds. So in this case, I find five seconds works really well. I can also select the other objects and make them appropriately set as well. Let's make sure that they're all set up equally. And I can also turn off no tran. I also like to not have a transition, so you can turn that off as well. Uh, it just seems to make the project a little snappier. Finally, what I like to do is change the on success action to, um, in this case, show my next button, uncheck continue playing the project. I will change the pause on the next button to be maybe half a second after any other pause that's occurring on this page. And then when it comes to the on failure, I like to set that for no action. And in this case here, we're going to give users three attempts to get this right. And if they if they're not successful, we'll have it automatically reset these objects back to their original location. So I think we're pretty much good to go. Let's test this out and see how drag and drop works with fluid boxes. Let's do a preview. So my initial reaction is this looks pretty good. Uh, let's try seeing what it looks like with different sized device screens. Fluid box works really well. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that result. And you could, of course, further customize it to change the background and so on so that it appears much more pleasant looking. I also probably wouldn't have the play bar on such a slide because, of course, they could scrub away and onto the, another slide. Let's test the functionality out. Let's first of all try and get it wrong. We'll go Montreal to Ontario. Vancouver to Quebec, Toronto to British Columbia, and let's hit submit and see how we did. Oh, that's incorrect. So we get the message for a nice long five seconds and everything bounces back to where it's supposed to be. This time, let's get it right. Toronto to Ontario, Vancouver to British Columbia, Montreal to Quebec. Let's hit submit. Fantastic. The submit button disappears automatically. That's part of the drag and drop functionality. I get my correct caption for five seconds and now I can proceed with the rest of my project by clicking on the next button. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com, follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.